Hello everyone! We moved to a new house about a month ago, which is why I haven't uploaded videos recently. It's just been so busy. We are a little further away from civilization, and the bears visit regularly, but so do the deer and, of course, the birds. There's so much to do settling into our new home, and our old bird feeder is still not hung back up yet. But I just got a new bird feeder from Netview, and I can't wait to try this out. They sent me the bird feeder slash security camera for free in exchange for making a video about it. No strings attached, I can say whatever I want, and I'm excited to try it out. BirdFi was introduced on Kickstarter as the first AI recognition bird feeder camera. It's supposed to recognize more than 6,000 species of birds and send you a notification on your phone when a bird shows up. It also records a video of the bird for you to view either live or later. I just installed a Ring doorbell camera at my front door, so this sounded like a great idea. I could have another security camera from a different angle and also watch and feed the birds. I can't wait to try this out, although the weather is turning colder now, so there might not be too many birds around. Although I saw two blue jays this morning, so I'm really eager to hang this up. First out of the box is a solar panel to connect to the camera so the battery stays charged. Next is a nice size strap with Velcro to attach the bird feeder to a tree without nails. That ended up working out well, but if the tree is too wide, it might not. Next is the instruction manual, and in the manual is a QR code you can scan to download the NetView app, or you can just go to the App Store and download it. This is some sort of template to position the screws if you're using screws. I use the black Velcro strap instead. And here's the roof of the bird feeder. It covers the camera, and you tilt it back to add bird seed into the feeder. Here we have a little ledge for the birds to perch on while they're eating. The ledge is a little small. I don't think more than two birds can fit on it at the same time, but we'll see about that. And here we have the feeder with the camera already mounted inside. I'm going to need to plug it in first to charge up the battery, but otherwise it's all assembled. Here's the charging cable. And I think this is a tripod adapter. And here's the mounting plate. You'll need to use this either way. If you use the Velcro strap or screw it in, either way you'll need this mounting plate. Okay, so the first step is to plug in the camera to recharge. There's a port at the back, easy enough. And around 12 hours later, the green light came on, which means the camera is fully charged. Next, I need to download the app. That allows me to view the birds live and also get notifications on my phone. You can also insert a micro SD card and it will store the recorded videos or just use your phone to view it. The unit worked fine without the SD card, but I don't know how long they will store your videos online unless you pay for extra storage. So if you want to keep the footage of the birds, I suggest you get an SD card. Next, I needed to download the app. Go to the App Store and type in NetView BirdFi and a bunch of choices will come up. Choose this one, NetView Home Security. It has 4.5 out of 5 stars, not bad, and then click on Install. Next, it wants you to create an account, and I hate this part. I have too many accounts on too many apps, but if you want to use the app, I guess you have to make an account. Fill in the information, agree to the terms of service, and sign up. At this point, I decided to try accessing the app using the QR code that came in the instruction manual, and that took me to the same download page, so I had no choice but to sign up and create an account. Next, the app asks for permission to record, etc. I said yes. I think you need to, or else it won't record the birds. So I said allow, and then access media on my phone, I also said allow. I don't keep anything private on my phone, so that's fine. Next, you need to select your device, since NetView makes different types of cameras. For this, I chose the BirdFi, of course. 
and then clicked on add new camera. Next it says please long press the power button until the camera emits a tip sound. Not sure what a tip sound is. Plug in the camera. Please connect to a power source until you hear an alert sound from the camera and it completes the rotation. Okay, so let's peel back the protective cover and here is the power button and here's the SD slot. I'm going to put in the SD card at this point, although it didn't tell me to. And of course, I put it in backwards. I don't know why, but I always insert SD cards backwards the first go. Always. Okay, now for the long press, until the camera emits the tip sound. I don't know what a tip sound is, but I guess I'll find out. Please use the app to format your SD card first. Okay, so we want to reformat the SD card. I didn't expect that, and I think I have video clips on this card, so I'm going to have to transfer those files before I reformat the SD card. Just realize you'll lose those files once you reformat the card. Meanwhile, I took the camera over to an outlet and plugged it in, since that's what it said to do after long pressing the power button. And now I need to confirm that I heard a beeping sound. Okay, done. For battery cameras, please double click the power button to make the camera enter a scanning mode. Okay, this is a battery camera, so let's double click. And now it says allow NetView to access this device's location. And it gives a choice between precise and approximate location. So I chose approximate. I'm not sure what the difference is for the app, but for my security, I'd rather people don't know my precise location. Who knows what scary birds are out there. Next, it needed the password for my Wi-Fi, so I put that in. Next, scan the QR code that pops up on the phone. It took a little bit of angling the phone and the camera just right, and then I was connected. Wi-Fi connected. Please use the app to format your SD card first. So it wants to format my SD card and this time I'm ready since I transferred all my files to the hard drive. So I let the app format the SD card. Now I'm ready to put this bird feeder outside on a tree and there are two options. To screw or nail it to the bark or use the Velcro strap. Either way, you have to slide the mounting plate on the bottom of the bird feeder like this. And I need to finish assembling the bird feeder. Here's a little ledge, and I mean little, for the birds to sit on. Just line up the screw holes on the front and screw it on. I have to say the instruction manual is really well done with lots of pictures and explanations, so it was easy to figure out how to put the feeder together. The roof is next. It has two notches on each side of the bird feeder and just clicks into place and it only clicks one way correctly so you won't put that in upside down. I was about to put some bird seed into the chamber behind the camera but then I decided I should fasten the bird feeder to a tree first and then I'll add the seeds. This way it won't spill all over the place while I'm trying to mount the bird feeder. Here you can see I mounted it on a tree using the Velcro strap. And in goes the bird seed. ice cream truck. Just what I need. So I had the bird feeder on that tree for a couple of days and no birds visited. Then I decided that maybe it was too close to the street. I moved the bird feeder to another tree further up on our driveway away from the street. Once again I used the velcro strap to mount the bird feeder and you can see in this location the birds have been eating. I'll show you the footage in a moment, but first I want to fill up the bird feeder with some more bird food. This is the antenna, 
and back here you can see the connection if I decide to install the solar panel it came with. Okay, let's get some more bird seed in the bird feeder. And the seed all went on one side, so I have to get another cup and fill up the other side. Here we are just a couple of days later and most of the bird food is gone. I know I've had a lot of birds come by because I keep getting notifications on my phone. So let's have a look at that and then let's also take a look and see what's been recorded on the SD card. First the phone app. Here you can see what the notifications look like on my phone. I can see when the birds visited and if there's an AI logo at the top left of the picture then it means the bird was identified. Here are a few of the birds identified by the AI. A blue jay, actually lots of blue jays, or the same one that keeps coming for a visit. Then a tufted titmouse, another blue jay, and then an eastern bluebird, except this one has funny looking ears. Wait, isn't that a squirrel's ears? Why does it say eastern bluebird? Next picture, ah yes, a squirrel. And now the squirrel is a purple finch, go figure. Oh no, now the squirrel's a blue jay. And now it's a Carolina wren. Now that's a blue jay. Okay, so it's not 100%, but it's still fun to see the birds. Let me show you a couple of clips I got from the SD card. we caught the Amazon delivery guy. This bird feeder can double as a security camera if you put it in the right place, but who knows what you'll catch on camera. There is a live function so you can connect to the camera from your phone and see in real time what's happening. And also there's a mic so you can speak and an alarm so you can blast it and a white light to scare away any intruders and probably the birds as well. I guess you could use it to scare away the squirrels. I don't know about the bears. The only thing not quite right with this bird feeder is the AI recognition. It still needs some work. Yes, it has over 6,000 birds in its database, but the facial recognition is not quite there yet, but close. I hope you enjoyed this video review of the BirdFi bird feeder. Thanks for watching. Bye.